How's it going guys? Anxious Cynic back again with another Minimator tutorial. So another question I've gotten asked is, how do you make a nether portal? And the answer to this one is actually quite simple, though we're going to try to delve a little bit deeper into it today. So the easiest way, there are two different ways you're going to do it. I'm going to show you both of them. And the first easiest way is to just import it as scenery. So if you have a Minecraft world and uh, you got a nether portal in it, then you would just navigate over here to your your world, load that up, and you just take your little selector here and isolate your nether portal, unless of course it's part of the scene that you want to have it in. It's up to you. Whatever works. Let's see if we can get this just about right. Doesn't have to be perfect depending on how you're doing it. And bring this in, and there's your active nether portal. Uh, unfortunately, it's got these little lines here. There probably could be like a more advanced way of doing this where you could get rid of those lines and make this more of a flat plane. But uh, I'm not 100% sure about that. So let's see what we can do to customize it. But first, uh, you know, this is pretty much it. You could just do this and have it in your animation and you're good to go. But what if you want to see if you can make it more customizable? What if you don't have a Minecraft world save or any such case? Well... You can build it yourself just as you can with anything else in Minimator. So let's get started. We're going to go over here and click on our blocks. And I actually have this nether portal uh, block already selected. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and spawn that in. And as you can see, it's an animated nether portal bit there. So let's go into our blocks again. And we're just going to bring in some obsidian so let's go down to our o's because i have this sorted by name you can obviously click on this and change that and uh yeah so there we go there's obsidian and we're pretty much good to go on that we're going to bring that in and what we're going to do is actually duplicate this obsidian that we have so for the first one uh it's going to be fine we're just going to duplicate this in our library and also spawn this in and we'll just drag that over so now we have two different iterations of obsidian you don't have to do it this exact way this is just what i'm doing all right so uh next thing we want to do is go to our obsidians in the library we want to go to the repeat button and we're going to tick that check it in and we want to make it go up or whatever this one we're going to go up by three uh, this is on my Z. Once again, if you've seen any of my other tutorials, it may be Y for you if you don't have that option checked. Uh, so just keep that in mind. It's either going to be Y or Z for you. In any case, uh, we want that one to be high and we want the other one to be horizontal. So that's probably going to be on our X. Actually, we got to select the right one first. Let's go ahead and repeat that. And then we're going to make that three on the X. Actually, this one's going to be four, I believe. All right, so this is our bottom and our top, and this is gonna be our sides. So what I'm gonna do here is go ahead and center this up and just move this other stuff out of the way so it doesn't look too weird for now. And uh, what I'm gonna do is parent the side one here to this top one. Let's go ahead and do that. And uh, this actually doesn't have to be done in this order, but that's just the way I'm gonna do it for now to keep things real simple and easy for us. All right, so we obviously want to move these around and get them in position. And I know it's going to be 16 on the Z for me. Of course, it might be Y for you. But uh, another thing you can do is click this button and turn on the grid snapping. And that will allow it to snap 16 and 16 in increments of 16. There we go. Uh, which is basically 16 pixels since these blocks are 16 pixels a squared or whatever you want to call it um and then of course when we move it it'll move it in increments of 16 of course this is uh four blocks and it's not quite centered up the way you would want it to be so that's going to be a little bit off we can try bringing that down to eight and see if we can get it to snap on over there we go where we want it to be all right so now what i'm going to do is duplicate this one in our timeline here by clicking the duplicate button and i'm just going to drag it over and have it like that and we're going to duplicate the bottom one and of course when we do that it's going to duplicate all of our uh, attachments that's why i said you wouldn't necessarily want to do it in that order damn it i brought out but there you go anyway um so what we're just going to do is delete those two just like that and we're going to parent this one by itself up to the uh, thing here and we're going to make this back to 16 to make it easier on ourselves you don't have to do it that way this is just the way i'm doing it 
to make it real quick and easy like. And there we go. So now we have a nether portal and if we move this one, we move the whole dang old thing. And no one can stop us or tell us any other way or otherwise anyway. Uh, so there you go, there's your nether portal. And of course we want these things here. Let's go ahead and zero out its position. So we're pretty good to go. And of course, since it's in the center, we need to bring that down. And hopefully that will line us up just right. There we go. And we only have one. So are we gonna have to, actually, let's, 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 let's parent this one to it as well. We actually need that all to be together. So there we go. Fortunately, I didn't move this from the zero position. So that's why it lined up perfectly even after I parented it. If it goes all wonky for you, just remember to zero out the positions, etc. But we already had it set up right, so we didn't need to do that. Anyway, so instead of having to like duplicate this, I mean, you could if you wanted to, you can make them all different colors or whatever, but we're just gonna go with a basic nether portal here. So what we wanna do is go to our nether portal in our library, turn on repeat, and we're gonna repeat it once on the X and three times on the Z. And as you can see, when we repeated it, that kind of screwed up our positioning. So let's just go ahead and zero that out. And it worked out perfectly. So there you go. There's your nether portal uh, goodness. Uh, so we also still have these lines here and uh, I'm not really sure if there's much you can do about them other than some advanced method with a plane uh, and texturing it with these and, and whatnot, but let's just see if we do that, we scale it down to zero on the Y. We basically turn it into a flat plane, and there you go, you get rid of them lines. Uh, you can't do that if you do the import scenery because these parts will all be one solid item and you can't scale one without scaling the other. So this way we can scale the nether portal texture independently, and of course it does make it flat. I, I kind of feel like that is a somewhat undesirable effect, but you do get rid of those lines. It just looks like one solid goodness there. So that's uh, that's how you can do that. And that's how you do stuff. So there's also one thing you might wanna do and that is kind of portray the nether portal look of the camera. So let's go ahead and just spawn in a camera. I have not tried this <laughs> myself, but uh, I figured maybe we'll go ahead and give it a try and see if it's possible to make this look kind of like what you would do with a uh, an actual thing. So what I'm gonna do is actually duplicate our nether portal here. Let's do that and we're gonna make it invisible. All right. And uh, on this one that we have duplicated, I'm gonna turn on affected by wind. All right, and obviously you don't see any effect here whatsoever. So let's go on down here and we'll make the one that we have visible, invisible. And at that point in time, we're gonna make the invisible one visible. And as you can see there, it starts, it's it's going all wonky. It looks kind of like uh, stuff's happening, you know? It looks like it's doing stuff. Uh, also, you may wanna turn off cast shadows on these blocks. Uh, I'm not really 100% sure what effect that will have. Let's take a look at it. Uh, you may want it on, you may want it off. As you can see there, it kind of gives it a solid look. Uh, I don't know. I don't really know exactly the best way to handle that. Probably leave it on so it doesn't look too too weird. Anyway, um, so if you have this going on, then you may want to up the wind power a bit. Let's see where we go. We're going to go down here into the background. We're going to turn it up. And as you can see, it's kind of going... Real crazy like, let's actually turn that off. So some of these seams are showing back up and stuff like that, but you could zoom in with your camera on something like this and kind of have it do that. You could possibly animate uh, your camera's field of view and screen ratio, stuff like this. So let's see if we can bump that up and then we'll bump it back down. Maybe actually move it in a little bit so that doesn't show up on the sides there. And uh, let's just copy paste this over and over about a couple of times just to get a look at this and see what it looks like. And, you know, it doesn't look that good, but you can kind of use that technique to kind of give it this weird thing. And the uh, the nether portal bit here, actually, let's, uh, <laughs> let's bring that over here. All right, so let's do that and bring this out and have that do that. And on this one, we're gonna have it go back in again. 
And uh, what you would get is, like, say your character jumped into the nether portal. And the camera's going to zoom in on them. And, you know, this is a little bit of trickery here. There's a few advanced ways. If you watch other tutorials that I've made, such as the reflection tutorial or the inventory tutorial, how you can use another camera as a texture. Uh, you could probably use that method. I won't go into it in this tutorial, but you could probably use that method and get a better result with this. In any case, uh, what you could do is have this show up like that, and then the camera will start doing all this stuff, and then that stuff's blowing in the wind at that point when that layer becomes visible, and you kind of have this pseudo thing going on. You can also take the uh, camera here and change its color. So let's go ahead and have that come up to a purplish color, maybe not quite so much. And mix it a bit so you get this kind of it becomes extra purple kind of like how uh, it does in Minecraft and you could obviously have this animate over time so let's go from here let's say it goes to 10% and then here it will go to 20% then 30 and then let's just say 35 let's slow it down just a tad 40 45 50 and 80 just have to go nuts at that last one and then what you would get is this kind of increasingly purple thing and then he teleports you see it's not the best looking effect of course like i said you could obviously make this look a, a bit better uh if you spend some more care and time on it maybe add some keyframe transitions so that actually doesn't look uh, much better. It actually looks worse. But anyway, you could do some things, mess with the timing and, and whatnot, and then get a nice, oh, I'm teleporting kind of a thing. So there you go. That's how you can make a nether portal from scratch or import it as scenery and how you could do kind of a teleportation effect as Steve or whoever is getting warped into the nether portals. Uh, whatever, it, whatever it does. I don't know. What, what, what does it do? I don't know what you would call that. Teleportation? I don't know. That word sounds boring to me. Anyway, so that's it, guys. I uh, hope you learned something. hope you enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to hit that like button. Comment and subscribe. Become a citizen today. Share it with your friends and your family and your pets. And I will see you in the next video.